Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of uh, Till Death Do Us Pod with me, Tova Lee. And me, Michael Lee. Uh -huh. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm schwitzing, actually. Yeah, you're a bit hot, aren't you? Uh, why, why you got the, the big jumper Because today? I thought it was like winter, yeah, but, but yeah, there's but sun and it's that, hot. Yeah, but the heating, the amount of heating. Why is the heating on? on? I, I, I'm asking you, why have you put the heating I don't on? Put, I didn't put it on. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, oh, oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. So how is everybody doing? I hope everybody's having a good week wherever you are tuning in from. We have an amazing um, episode for yeah. you today. I feel like we've been interviewing some really, really interesting people. Mainly yeah. women, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't interviewed one man. I just realized that. We haven't had one man on the show. Disgraceful. <laughs> I know. So it's sexist. Really, I know. Uh, but we really have some amazing, uh, have had uh, some amazing guests. And we have another amazing guest uh, today. Yeah, well, today we've got Emma Sale, uh, founder of Killing Kittens, uh, CEO of it. Um, one of UK's leading sex entrepreneurs. Uh, launched 15 years ago. Uh, it's over, It's got over 160 thousand members across the world worldwide um sort of the forefront really of female sexual liberation she's been all over the papers international media tv shows radio corporate talks uh she also has self-date an app to help protect online data the sisterhood which is a a uh ph philanthropic division that raises money for female charities um, but Killing Kitten, right, mm. is uh, probably one of the world's uh, most exclusive um, sex parties yeah. kind of platform, isn't it? Yeah, so, but run, run for women. Yes, by for women. women, by women, but there are yeah. men at the party. Well, just for anybody like, going, yeah. oh, is it just women there? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, but all about women empowerment and women taking uh, control and yeah. uh, owning their own sexuality. And we'll, and we'll ask about how it works. Yes. Don't worry, if you're already thinking, oh, wow, well, has it worked? Don't worry, we're going to ask about how it works, how do women... How are they in how control and power? You know, what, what do you mean? How does well, it I know work? how the actual act works. <laughs> how does it work? I know, I know how sex works. Okay. I've, I've seen it in a book. Okay, should we just get, should we invite Emma to join yeah, us let's, now? Let's, 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 let's do that. Let's, let's do that. Welcome to the lovely Emma Sale. <laughs> Yay. Thanks Hi, for Emma. having me. Hi, yeah. Thank you very uh, no. much for joining us. It's such a pleasure. I actually can't believe it took us so long to have you as a guest on my podcast, on our podcast. That's like our bad. I know, I think it's because we just chat in general and then we just sort of assume that we've both been on each other's podcasts and then we go, no, we haven't yeah. actually. Maybe we should. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming uh, on the show and for, I mean, we obviously did the intro and everything, but uh, Killing Kittens, CEO, founder uh, of Killing Kittens, which, by the way, are celebrating 15 years today. Am yes, I right? today. Oh, happy birthday. Thank Happy you. birthday. I know. Yeah, so founded in 2005. And for those who don't know what Killing Kittens is, because uh, sometimes I think people probably hear the name Killing Kittens and they get very worried. Yeah. Is that true? They think it, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. When you look at the name, even now I look at the name and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the hell? <laughs> What were you thinking? What, what's it? What's where it come from? The name. Um, well, do you know when I when I decided to call it that, I hadn't slept for three days in Ibiza, and um, it was um, it's it's slang for every time every time someone masturbates, God kills a kitten. So if you're having yeah, if you're having a wank, you're killing a kitten. So killing kittens oh, is just you know. Oh, that's very clever. Lots of Wait, lots of pleasure. Said that? It's a, it's some it's a With some this... cyber expression that yeah, oh, wow. it's like a meme. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. really, what a great name. Wait, we, wait, we, there's so much I, I, I feel like I'm going to be so scattered today, but I just want to say with regards to the name, um, cause I've been to a few of your events, uh, and we'll talk about all of everything you guys do, but I don't remember at which event I got a notebook with <laughs> killing kittens on it, which I then gave to my daughters, potentially inappropriate, I don't know, but they, they have it and they're so confused about the name. I haven't told them what it actually stands for, but they were like, they don't actually kill kittens, do they? Um, so no, they don't. What, Emma, what were you doing before you set it up? You mentioned you set it up in 2005. Uh, what, what was your kind of career uh, beforehand? So, um, and then for what then happened in 2005 for you to go, this is what I'm going to do. Um, my, I did PR. So, right. um, but it kind of, I started in financial PR um, and had, um, I had a few harassment issues in the city because this is what, 20 years right. ago. Um, 
And so it was kind of, it was this fire I say was sort of burning in me from when I was little, because I grew up in the Middle East, um, grew up in the Middle East with a very arsehole dad. Um, but I was at all girls boarding school where you're taught you can be whatever you want to be and go out and rule the world. So I, I grew up with very mixed messages and mix what I was seeing when it came to women and how women were treated. Um, so I guess it was kind of always bubbling and every time something happened, it would just add to the fire. And so in PR, having the harassment issues and then complaining and being told I'd be a troublemaker and not probably get a job in the city again. Um, and I went into entertainment PR um, and ended up doing helping with the PR for the erotica show with big sort of show which i don't think it happens anymore actually um with a weird and wonderful oh, cool. and every amazing person involved in like the adult industry or anything to do with sex um and it was doing that that i kind of kept seeing again that it was all run by men and even if it was sort of lingerie brands or sex toy brands it was still male founders thinking they knew what women wanted um and saying this is what you want female folk <laughs> we've designed it you're welcome um and it was kind of it just kept fueling um, and the double standards just out and about because I was early 20s and just sort of dating and that kind of the the feeling I had that embarrassment or the guilt or the shame you felt, you know, when you're out and you kind of, and I, I, can, I remember, you know, you'd get close to going all the way with a guy and you'd stop yourself because that difference between actually having sex and not meant that you were, you know, you were still keep keeping all your kind of, you know, not virginity, but your kind of holy, mm -hmm. holier than now kind of appearance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when you look at it, it's ridiculous that that one little act can turn you from a sinner to a saint um, or saint to a sinner. Um, and whereas men everywhere around me were kind of, they had one night stands, they were legends and high fied and no one cared and that big slut shaming going on. And, and in 2005, 2004, um, Sex and the City came out. Um, and you had this bunch of women all talking about sex toys and their sex lives and there was this whole kind of, you know, shock, <laughs> horror and, and Summers hit the high streets and suddenly you had stores on the high street selling toys um, and Lalo went into Selfridges. Um, so this kind of, in society, this kind of bit of a buzz around female sexuality um, going on and it was sort of, and that's it. And it kind of, I had this anger of watching what was going on around me um, and I wanted to do something and I think it was kind of I wanted to create something that I a world that I wasn't involved in personally naked and whatever but I think it was this fancy world in my head that I thought this is how it should be and this is how I want women to be and it should be equal and they should be able to get naked and dance around in their lingerie and and so yeah and so out in Ibiza and um um, watching, it was at a wedding, a very hedonistic wedding with a well-known set in London, um, who were all at it left, right and centre, and the women just owned it and were so sexually strong. Um, and just watching as this very insecure 25-year-old that didn't want to get naked in lights in front of anyone, um, just thought, right, that's it. I want to create a world online, offline, where women were in control and in control of their sexuality and they felt safe and not mm. judged. And, um, and that's where... Yeah, that's where it came from. <laughs> but, you, I mean, again, I mean, it's only 15 years ago. And, and again, you mentioned there you came from the Middle East, which most, mid, well, all pretty much all Middle East countries are very conservative. Setting up then in the UK, which I still think is, is pretty conservative. It, yeah. it's, it's got much better now. Did you then, when you set it up, did you face, therefore, a lot of judgment and resistance from friends, family, venues, possible investors, when oh you yeah, mass the massively. It's, it's so um, mm. innovative what you did. It, I, it kind of hadn't been done before. You know, huge, huge amounts. I mean, I still get it. Um, but everyone thought, but I was a real gobshite. And um, I was right. sort of, and my friends and family knew that if I had an idea and wanted to do something or really, I've got a bee in my bonnet about something and had done since I was little, there was no stopping. You just had to kind of let her roll. So I think a lot of people thought it was a phase. <laughs> I was going through, um, just let her go, just let her go, do you know what I mean, she'll juggle out of it, and the whole joke, and we joke about it in the office, is that is people ask me when I'm going to get a proper job, um, and people still ask, you know, if I haven't seen them very, oh, are you still doing those parties, yeah, I am, um, and um, so, and I, I mean, I lost friends, there were people that went, it's disgusting, I mean, what are you doing, you've completely lost your mind, and we don't want to be associated, and, and I felt friends completely back off, 
it's funny because some of them are backing back in, <laughs> but my elephant memory remembers there's a long list. <laughs> there's a long list of people. Um, and um, yeah, and I think family wise, you know, mum's mom always been really supportive. She just worries about me. That's the thing. She gets what I'm doing and has always got it, um, but has worried about how people would treat me and the abuse I'd get and the backlash I'd get. And so that's, you know, that's always been her um, worry on that front. But, but I mean, it's, it still goes on. You still, it's better. It's way better now. But there's still so many people around businesses that don't want to be associated or, you know, me members, are, you know, often be like, oh, well, I you know, I can't be seen. I've got this big job. I can't be seen to be involved. And you go, why not? <laughs> what's the yeah, issue because i think there is um there is a massive um stigma properly properly and uh, again for those who are not clear on what killing kittens is I, I, I don't know how you describe it but um you know the first time i ever heard about killing kittens was when somebody said oh my god there's these amazing sex parties where women are in control and i was like what <laughs> that sounds amazing um and that's the that's the i love that that that's the number one rule so they are it's a community uh like you said it's online offline so but you guys offer so much than uh so much more from just parties so there's the sex parties and these are events that you do and from my understanding they're worldwide you've done them all over the world um there's also the online stuff so it's like a community and people can actually connect with each other and and you do a lot of social events that are not necessarily sex parties just uh, you know a, an opportunity for people to kind of like mix and and yeah. meet each other and then of course you've got all your courses because i went to a course with a friend with my friend ava and we went to a shabari course oh which nice was yeah, it was, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Japanese rope, office. Japanese rope. So you tied yeah. each other yeah. up. <laughs> I mean, it was. It I, mean, was I, did, I did that in the Cub Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just use the same knots. It's, it's very similar knots. Just in there. <laughs> <laughs> that reef knot. It's amazing what it can do. I actually <laughs> hope that people didn't ask for a refund after we attended that course. <laughs> yes. And people were like, really. You know, I I would like I'm happy to try anything once, but you know, some things are going to be your cup of tea, and some things right. are not going to be your cup of tea. So for me, like it didn't feel like this would be something that would uh, arouse me or like get me in the mood. But some people do find mm. it. So I just think like potentially me and Ava in that uh, class was not very appealing to That's a lot of people. Yes. But, <laughs> but how would you? And and uh, and obviously you've now you've got your other things. There's the sister. Is is that how I pronounce it? Yes, yeah, sister. Just yeah, sister. the system. Which is a place for women to network, which I went to one of the events of as well. So how, like, you're a really, it's like a big brand, the way I see it, that empowers women. Like you say, from the bedroom or yeah. from the boardroom to the from, bedroom. Or from exactly, the bedroom from the, the bedroom to the boardroom. So like a, yeah. a full 360. <laughs> I know, exactly, because we were, that bedroom to boardroom thing, we were, because it's always, the last couple of years has been like, we've had, we've got a system, we've got a safe date, which is an app to keep people safe dating and, and killing kittens and it's sort of they're all you know ever, people are like well they're all in this group and it's just female empowerment and i was speaking to someone actually in lockdown i think doing a, a podcast and it i just said it's basically you know from the bedroom to the boardroom and then we did kind of just stuck because actually it's an easy way to explain it because to me they're not all separate if you can own it in the bedroom and have a voice and say what you like sexually then you can storm into a boardroom and demand a pay rise and tell people that you don't agree with their ideas you know it's sort of it actually to me they're very intertwined our, our sexual confidence actually is very intertwined in our professional confidence and how we get out there in the workplace as women so it's sort of yeah they're all very separate but to, to me I'm like this year I've been like no it's all you know what I mean it's all interlinked <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah, for sure. So, you know, for those who have uh, maybe uh, are curious and want to know, like, what to expect. So going to a Killing Kittens event, a party, what could one expect? And there are some rules, right? So what are the rules that you, you and how did you come up with those rules as well? Um, again, the rule, the rules I came up with, again, in, in Ibiza. Um, and I, was, I said, I want rules like rules of Fight Club. Um, so you don't talk about it and and the mask we've always had masks and I was like oh masks like eyes wide shut and 
Um, and we've kind of, the rules have stuck. We've always had... Um, but the main one, I mean, the main rule that we have in across all the events and also all the online worlds, so the online world is sort of Bumble meets Facebook, um, is that women make the first move. So men can't go up to a girl they don't know. They have to wait for the girl to come and approach them. And it's the same online. You can't just, you know, see search profiles as a guy and go, oh, she looks hot and start sending them sleazy messages. You have to, you can like them, but only when they like you back can you then engage in, in messages so mm -hmm. so the main um so that's the main rule and then uh, what to expect at the party so if it's a full-on killing kittens parties there i would say sort of they're like just private house parties where the wheels come off so you go in it's all you know you go oh this is a nice looking bunch of people and everyone's wearing masks and it's like champagne reception and there might be some entertainment and a dj and bar areas and you and it kind of is like sort of a very glamorous house party but then if you wander upstairs or wander into the back rooms you'll just suddenly come into a room that's all candlelit and there's 50 naked people um yeah. on the bed in there like Dante's Inferno so um so yeah that's that's what happens and I, I've always said you know they are the sex does happen at the events but I've always kind of gone sex to me at the parties they're a byproduct it's for me it yeah. was setting the scene and creating an environment yeah where women felt comfortable and if they wanted to have sex they can have sex and so there is a lot of sex <laughs> that goes on um but to me and like in our team we we focus on everything else and yeah all the entertainment and the ambience and and that when i launched was the big one of the big reasons why i did it because i thought you know sex to men and what it's why porn didn't work because sex is you know brightly lit porn will turn a lot of men on it's for women it's like no, we need the touch and the smell and the ambience and the feel and our brains are bigger sex organs and that needs turning on. So to me, it was like, right, that's what needs focusing on. Sex is like, you know what I mean? It'll happen. You set all that up, but it's the same in relationships. It's like, you know, I say to my hubby, hey, it's, you know, I just want date nights. I want to switch my brain off from kids and mess and work. Take me to the pub for an hour. I'll come back feeling like a hot wife and I'll be a sure thing. <laughs> you I, I, know, I'm, it's sort of. I'm exactly the same. Tova likes the sort of bright light. Or no, I need the candles. I need the flowers. I need the mood lighting. I need the chocolates. I need more chocolates. Then more chocolates. Then I might be ready. Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> and um, so I just what I'm interested, like in terms of like uh, um. You know, again, I think there is a stigma and probably people, uh, I don't know, might think that, oh, it's just single people or young people or a certain age bracket or a certain whatever. Um, and when I went to the event, what actually surprised me was how many couples were there. It does seem like something couples like doing together. So is that did that surprise you? Is that No, true? I mean, it... to be honest, it didn't surprise me because when it first launched... Um... It was it was pretty much all couples coming because, you know, 15 years ago for single women to go out to an event like this was sort of a massive no, no. So what, what was back then was probably 95 percent couples. Now, 15 years on, it's kind of we have to actually cap the number of single girls. So we'll have a party of 250 people and we'll cap single girls at about 90 and the rest are couples. So it kind of keeps keeps it balanced. Um so you get that you get couples with well, i think what's happened a lot with with couples coming is and the way women's sexuality has kind of exploded is this allowance that women are naturally bi curious i've always said it since day one and people used to laugh at me i'm like no there's a sexual you know sexuality spectrum one to seven and women are very three four five that's like fact that's scientific fact and i'm like i don't know one girl that hasn't thought about what it would be like to kiss another girl and, you know, I used to say it, then people were like, bollocks, and then they'd have a couple of glasses of wine, and then they'd be like, well, actually, I have thought about, you know, and I'm like, that's why we check, you know, women check out women way faster than men check out women when you're walking down the road. It's just the way we are. Um, you do, yeah. you you used to do, I don't know if you still do that, but you do uh, women-only parties. Yeah, that, we've got, um, the, yeah, yeah, it's called the clitorati. Uh -huh, so it's like female-only um events and they're doing really well and we've kept them going in lockdown <laughs> so we've had some virtual ones um they've been fun um and oh i was gonna ask you about lockdown because obviously i was gonna ask you about the about lockdown because obviously you know uh physical interaction now is something that like the world's changed so much in the past year 
and you know that's a massive part of of the business is these physical interactions and 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 in real life so how have you guys adapted um i mean well there is a massive gaping hole in our revenue <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um <laughs> but but within like week one we thing is we were and a lot of people didn't realize we were considered we're considered a tech business because over 50 percent of our revenue comes from our online world um so and we spent the last three years building a new building a new app a new platform that was always launching this summer and since january we've been moving we would started moving all our education um workshops into online webinars um and master classes so we already that was already happening we just suddenly moved all the education side within a week everything then suddenly became so we're doing like two a week on the education side of things and from week one we launched these house parties zoom obviously um zoom house parties on a um <laughs> friday um friday night and we've been doing them every weekend yeah every every weekend since so um it kind of you know they make us a little bit of money it's like pissing in the ocean quite frankly yeah. um, but um we've been doing them on new york time zones and australian time zones and um um yeah and they've just you know they've been really fun and to us it's kind of our community is the key bit and so a big part is keeping the community going and you know right at the beginning when it happened it was like that there's gonna be a lot of our members who are stuck at home on their own and loneliness is a huge thing and you know we, we know the whole mental health side of human interaction and touch and you know that yeah. social um is a huge part of you know of our business so it was sort of well we need to keep all that going um and it doesn't no, it doesn't come down to commercials it just sort of right we can function we're kind of an agile, yeah. very agile kind of crew anyway. We work from home a lot. We've got developers all over. Most of our team don't even live in London. Half of them don't even live in England. Um, so it, we're used to operating on different time zones. Um, so actually that whole digital virtual world, we were very much used to operating in. Um, so we went from being sort of, you know, 50-50 um, to 100% digital, which which is which, which was fine because we know how to do it we've always done that um we've been doing it for years um and then the whole new platform launch right. this summer um so that's all gone up membership wise so yeah just gotta get on with it <laughs> yeah mm. i wanted to ask you also about um the sisterhood which is the charity that you set up uh for effectively to raise money for female charities through extreme sports and challenges. Was that another thing you, you dreamt up in Ibiza? <laughs> no, but it was the same it was the same year. I think I basically had a year of just going, right, fuck it. Uh, and um, I um yeah, a bit of a quarter life crisis, I think, age like 24, 25. And I um um it was I was always, I always loved my sport and there was another thing, another crux in the early twenties as I looked around and all the guys were kind of still members, you know, they could be members of rugby clubs and stuff and they went out and played golf and men were much better at kind of keeping their boyfriends than having that women kind of hit London and suddenly it was all sort of working and finding a man and and I just missed that I was a real team sport person at university um and I missed that um and I started doing some like adventure races and things and getting some girlfriends together and we met this group of guys who were giving it the big macho chat about how they'd done a race and they, their team was the brotherhood and and i went we were in the bar and they and they said we want to do we want to go across the english channel um and i went fuck it uh -huh, i'm gonna launch a sisterhood and we'll race you across and that was after a couple of bottles of wine and then i woke up the next morning and i'm the sort of person that once i've said i'm gonna do something that's it there's no so it started yeah it started like that that first year racing these guys across the english channel we lost by 11 minutes which i think is a really good i'll take that um and um yeah starting like that and then the bit i loved that first year i didn't like it was so full-on training for that race i didn't like that bit i liked the whole community side of it and the getting together and these girls from all different backgrounds and industries and some were sporty some were not but doing it together and the confidence it gave them doing these doing this race and i thought that's the bit again it's kind of the empowerment thing of like that's the getting people who don't aren't really very confident at all to realize actually how much they can do and what they can do when they really get involved and it was that bit so um yeah 
the sisterhood became a thing and every every year we've done one or two big races um around the world and raised we always have a big ball and we raise yeah money for various like women's and children's charities so yeah it's been it's been fun that's kind of my i think it's been my selfishly like my support group really <laughs> on that side mm. <laughs> mm. i'm just gonna go up back to killing kittens again i'm i'm sure there's a lot of people out there listening um who are very curious uh, but also um like quite uh i don't know maybe kind of scared or intimidated or uh, so i just want to say again from my personal perspective and this is really my personal perspective because we didn't know each other mm. i wrote an article about the class that i did and i i i researched you and i read uh sort of like why you started what i what I loved was the backstory and everything that's come across today is why and everything that you say and do is what it where it came from and it really did come from a place of wanting to empower women and recognizing that there was a double standard which I absolutely agree mm. with and just taking uh, control and ownership over that and and not apologizing for it and I think it's just so uh, fabulous and for anybody who's like a bit um, scared, the other thing that was really apparent to me when I did go to those to to the to the events was it was so diverse, you know. As a 40 plus year old woman who's not a size zero and has a massive C section shelf <laughs> um, and wasn't even so sure that I look good in lingerie or could possibly look good in lingerie, you know, in a in a in a sex party, I felt fantastic. <laughs> and I think that's a real uh, that's you did that, you know, like Thanks. you did that. And uh, there were women there from all age groups. There were women there from all different body types. There was a really good, diverse kind of feeling. And everybody you could tell felt fucking amazing, <laughs> you know, and and that's great. And I think that's fantastic that you did that. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, you know, I'm Aries as well. And I just kind of, everyone always guesses what star sign I am. I just kind of, I get a bee in my bonnet and head down and ignore the white noise. And, and the more haters I have, the more I just go, fuck you, I'm going to prove you wrong. So I think it's just, that's just, that's my personality. Um, so I just yeah. question, question everything. Um, yeah. So that's, that, sometimes I look back and like now, today's one of those days because it's 15 year birthday and just go, what the hell? <laughs> what, how, how, what, and why, and yeah, and just crazy. Um, that it's been amazing, like roller coaster of fifteen do years. Ever, and do you, ever, do you ever get moms at the pickup go, ooh, you know, kind of like trying to find out a bit more? Can well, I do you know what? Out? They've just started because actually my oldest is six, so he only started school last September, and we knew it. We'd always joke. So we got three little e's, and but the no, but now she's fine because you don't really. And we knew when yeah. they started to hit school, it would suddenly, it would start. And it's a Church of England primary school. And act, but actually what's been amazing um, <laughs> is that they're all, most of them are really supportive. I've heard, of, I've heard some rumours, you know, that there's someone, there's someone having sex parties in their hot tub on, in at Thameside. And that's because that's where we live. <laughs> that was within a few weeks. So like, yeah, there's a mum and I'm like, yep. Yeah. No, if you've seen our garden and the three kids in our house, there's no chance in hell that there's any parties <laughs> happening. And I wish. Um, so they, yeah, there. And then a dad about a few weeks, no, about a month ago actually, said he said I think because we were having a conversation, he was asking my husband what he did, and then there's that. Awkward. I always know when people know what I do because they swerve asking me how work is or what I do, and so he kind of asked him and asked someone else, and then he got stuck. He looked at me and went. I think I know what you do. I went, oh, really? And he'd been out with some of the dads in a pub who'd been talking about it and go, well, you know her. We see you talking to her at the school gate. And he was like, what are you talking about? And he said they showed me the picture. And he, I was like, what? <laughs> um, so there is, but everyone's really, yeah, everyone's really cool about it. And they get it. And it's not like, you know, it's not like it was 15 years ago. So, um, yeah, it was quite funny. I do know some of them know because there are there are some mums who you, you you just know they they give you the look of like complete disgust. So yeah, but yeah. whatever. And I can imagine people. 
And I can imagine people probably thinking that it's, uh, like you said, you know, there's a separation between you, the personal, like you, the person, and your business, you know, and what you believe in doesn't necessarily mean that you ha you participate. And I know that you don't. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure that people can't sometimes mix the there's two that, up. Yeah, there's this, some, I always joke, there's this assumption with what I do, and I say it to some of the, you know, the mums and dads and stuff, that, that I'm going to jump the husbands or I'm going to nick the wives. So either way, I'm literally that woman that is going to ruin your relationship. Um, so, um, yeah, there is a kind of, with people, and I have to, I jokingly, there were some mums coming around this, this week, where one dropped a kid off to play football in our garden, um, and I was like, I'm going to sit in the hot tub and have some wine if you want to join me. And I did a side note, and I went, just for the avoidance of doubt, I will not be trying to jump you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, there's always, yeah, I always feel like I have to give a bit of a side note sometimes <laughs> that, you know, I'm asking you out for dinner as a couple. It does not mean that me and my hubby yeah, want to no. swing. Yeah, um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure people get confused. Okay, so for anybody who's interested or curious or wants to know a little bit more, um, obviously Killing Kittens, where can they find you? Where can they find Killing Kittens? Where should they go? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, with a name like that, it's a pretty easy Google. <laughs> so yeah. there aren't, yeah, there we're pretty much top of the list that comes up. Um, so yeah, to be honest, it's, we've got killingkittens.com, um, wearekk.com, um, and any anything on social media. If you just put in killing kittens, you'll find, yeah, you'll find us across all of it, and and Emma Sale is the same. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, I always say to Amazing. people, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? You. Well, especially at the moment with yeah. everything virtual, you can sit on your sofa and sit on your bed with your hubby or on your own and attend. We've got one or two workshops every week going on, really fun ones. And, you know, if you feel uncomfortable, just shut your computer down. You know, it's kind of what else you got to do at the moment because you're not allowed out. So have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> amazing yeah. emma thank you so much thank for joining so much, us emma. today Great. thanks for having love me love talking to you thanks well that was brilliant amazing so good. such a good guest again if you didn't write it down or whatever <laughs> killingkittens.com find out more about their parties everything they do all the online stuff is moment as well you can sign up for the sister app that's s-i-s-t-r app um which would you go to a party to, support to women would you go around to a party the world would me? i go to a party you know what in for a penny. You what? What does that mean? Is that oh, yeah? oh, God, God, I'll, I'll have a look. Wait, because when I went to the, yeah, I went to I one of their. Yeah, you were you were invited. Yeah, was bit... It was the uh, what was it called? Cabaret? No, was it a cabaret or cabaret? But it was like a. Nice Wait, it had food. You came. You, you know had what? a nice meal. You, you know saw what? a show, and then if you wanted, this. you could go to the we, back room yeah, and have yeah, an orgy. We, we um, talked about this in a previous show. Yes, yeah, tell me. The reason I didn't go okay. initially. I have an image. Yeah. <laughs> of God. a certain type of person that goes to sex parties. I'm sure wow, so before. rude. When, can I How rude? What does that when, mean? When I ran my club in oh, the West yeah. End, of London's Kittery Back in West the End, day. Wonderful club. We had a... Um, Swingers. Swingers. Yeah, it was a kind of S&M type oh. club. And I couldn't believe how normal and everyday people were. It was just a bit... I just What are you saying? That that's not normal? No, no, no. Different pleasures for different people. Hello? Anyway, when you came back from yeah. it and told me what it was it like. It was very civilised. And, and, as we just, <laughs> and as we just heard from Emma, yes. it goes on upstairs. You don't need to go upstairs. You don't need to. It's, it's not compulsory. But of course you do go there. Yeah. I, I found and, it very. And more importantly, you said the food was yeah. particularly the, good. The food was very if, good. If, if the the wine was good, superb. I'm in. Yes, exactly. I mm. had a great time. I was stuffed. I don't know how anybody could have sex after that meal, to be honest. Oh, you're stuffed. Oh, my God. You are stuffed yeah. before the food or after yeah, the food. It was like a three-course meal, and I had the dessert, and oh. I had the wine. I was like, oh, God. You know? <laughs> Plus, can I just be honest here? I wore my Spanx, like the granny pants, the really tight mm. ones. Like, if I wanted to take them off, I mean, I what were men wearing? Like, suits. So the oh, men okay. were wearing suits. Very, it was very smart. Right. I don't and dress um, some sort of ladies were all in lovely cocktail dresses. I hope right. this is okay to say. Like, maybe it's a secret what? what actually goes on in there. I don't know. But it was very, very smart. Very elegant. And then if you went like to some back rooms, it was not so very smart. Good, but it was really good. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. And I would totally go again. I think it's a great night out. <laughs> I think we should go together next time. Totally. So, yeah. So, if you're interested, guys, uh, killingkittens.com. And there we go. Um, no, that was it. Yeah. Great show. Great, great show. show. Great hey, guys, show. guys, let's do it again. 
Let's do it again <laughs> next it. week. This next is great. week. Okay, bye everybody. Bye.